Hey, let's go back to school. Hot Stove is going to have a uh, special feature that we're rolling out this winter where we talk to college coaches, college players, and we're going to try to hit the college game hard and really wrap our arms around it because there's so much new interest around college baseball. It's such a great landscape. Uh, the, the timeline for college players to get to the big leagues is quicker than it's ever been. So why not kick off this feature with one of the most successful head coaches in the college baseball landscape. Tim Corbin's been with the Vanderbilt Commodores for uh, two decades and is kind enough to take some time with us on Hot Stove this Monday. Tim, good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning, Matt. Thank you. Tell us about uh, about where you are right now on the timeline in terms of uh, workouts. Season doesn't get going for a little bit. Uh, you've got mm -hmm. a holiday break coming up. Where are you right now with the program in terms of the calendar? Yeah, it's kind of a downtime right now. We just finished the fall period uh, right before Thanksgiving. So this Thanksgiving Christmas time is kind of a wedge of uh, time, I guess, for the player to decompress a little bit albeit some of the pitchers are ramping back up again just because if they didn't throw in the fall, they're throwing now to get ready for the spring. But it's a quick ramp up time once we get back, though. Once we get back from Christmas break in January, then you've got about three and a half, four weeks before that mid-February timeline starts. So it gets on you pretty quick. Now, Tim, I can't help but notice your office is overlooking the field. So I wonder mm -hmm. how many of these young bucks come to your program and then they slip out there on the field. They're trying to impress you saying, look how hard I work, coach, because that's a pretty good location you have. Yeah, I don't miss anything. You can see everything, even when you don't have scheduled workouts. But it's good. It's it's used quite a bit. We've got a lot of pro players that come back to and use this space in the mornings before we get out there in the afternoons. But this uh, part of the facility is about four years old and built by the former players, too. We raised about $15 million for this new wing, I guess, and 90% uh, of it was uh, taken in by our alumni. So we're very fortunate to have it. Boy, and so many decorated uh, Vandy alums starring in Major League Baseball. Uh, Dansby Swanson, David Price. I mean, we could ge go on and on with that. I, I said so many things to talk to you about, Tim. And one of the questions I have is this. In, in the big leagues, uh, coaches have to contend with a lot in terms of what players are doing away from their eyeballs, right? Everybody has their own hitting guy or their own pitching guru away from the team, away from the field. Is that happening at the collegiate level as well? And, and how much of that do you do you try to keep your eyes and hands on as a head coach? Well, I think some. I think you just use your common sense when kids have coaches or people they've been around in their life that can help them with any type of fundamental or any type of uh, skill that they're, they're trying to better. But I, I think once you get here, then we're around them all the time. So in terms of them breaking away, uh, that doesn't typically happen unless it is Christmas break or during the course of the summer. But they're they're in front of us most of the time. I, I think the one thing about being a college coach is it's a it's a 12 month lifestyle just because even when they're not here, they're here. You know, your phone's with you. You're always communicating with them because of academic situations or athletic situations. So you're, you're basically tied into their life the entire time that they're here. Hey, Tim, Maddie mentioned Dansby Swanson, certainly one of the free agent shortstops that uh, are out there on the market. Um, I even believe you have to be a little bit surprised at the two seasons that he just put together, or maybe not. But when you saw him at Vanderbilt, did you, did you think that this was in there? Because my man's hitting 25 bombs. He plays every single day. He's driving in runs. Did you see all of this when you had him? I think you, I think the one thing that you do see is the kid being able to play at, at, at the level for a, a period of time. God willing, his health is good. But I think with Dansby, not knowing what his numbers are, and none of us know what that, that's going to be like, but I, I felt like he was going to be a big leaguer when he was here, and I felt like he could do it rather quick. I, I think the maturity, the competitiveness – and as you know, Billy, because you are a family full of, of players that played for a long time, is your ability to want to be out there in, in the times that you need to be out there in order to make yourself a, a, a very good player. And I think if, if there's questions about Dansby or any kids that 
play at such a high level, what what are those differences? And I think they just live differently. They 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 live out their life differently. They make decisions and choices that benefit them and benefit their career. And I've always felt like Dansby was going to have a long career inside that uh, that life. Um, he's been fun to watch, uh, to watch him grow. I, I felt like he would grow, and I, I did feel like at some point in time he'd be one of the more elite players at his position and in, really in, inside the game because when you look at his offensive skills, you mentioned the home runs, but I, where I really think he flourishes is that the activities just get better once he gets on base. He's a very skilled runner. He's got a high acumen for base running, and he loves to run the bases. So uh, he's, a, he's a very good all-around player. Hey, Tim, J.P. Morosi is with us this morning as well via yeah. remote in Ann Arbor, Michigan. J.P., take it away. Thanks, uh, and thanks, Coach Corbin, for your time. I'd love to ask a big-picture question about just the strength of the college game. You look at NIL and, and what that has brought into the NCAA. You also look at the way minor league baseball has changed in, in recent years and will continue to change going forward, Coach. How do you see that really adding to maybe the overall caliber of play we see right now in college baseball? Well, I think the caliber is high. Certainly in our conference, it's, it's very high. It's like Major League Baseball at the college level. But it, it's just older, JP. It's, 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 you've got kids that are coming back for their senior years. There's obviously a shorter draft. So you, you have guys that are going to finish their degrees and come back and play. You have more five-year players. And during this COVID stretch here, too, we saw more six-year players, too. So the 23-year-old, the 24-year-old was inside the college game. And you, you look at these kids, and they get into professional baseball. And, I mean, they're, they're just more mature, and they're stronger. So I would say in the college game, the strength, the mental strength of the player, those certainly uh, that that certainly has has been raised a, a great deal, and also you're able to acquire some players that that you weren't keeping uh, years ago because of the shrinkage of the draft. So I just think it's a better all-around game. It's certainly televised more. Uh, you can uh, you can see games at any point in time from February to June. So I, I think all around it's just become more competitive and. Uh, there's certainly a, a fine line between those teams that are at the top and at the bottom, too. The, that margin's not as big as it used to be. Hey, Tim, I want to ask you about uh, one of the guys on your roster here because of the family bloodline, and number 10 kind of pumps off the page here, T.J. McKenzie, uh, whose brother stars on the mound, Tristan, and uh, T.J. is an outfielder. Talk about his game, his growth, and, uh, and what he does for you as a, as a player. Well, Tristan was here a couple weeks ago. We had a UFC fight in our facility. We were watching it, and Tristan came and spent time with our team. And TJ, that you're talking about, is an outfielder for us. Uh, he's going to be a good player. He, he's really had a lot of patience. I think in a time where kids, if they don't get what they want right away in terms of playing time or activity on the field, sometimes they move on. That kid, it's never been the case for him. He's got a he's got a good skill package. He runs very well. He's got strength. Uh, he's a little bit broader than his brother, even though he's a little bit younger. But he's a positive light for sure. There's a force about him that that certainly helps your team. There's a lot of positive energy with him. But I can see him playing some right field or left field for us. Enrique Bradfield will probably play some center field for us most of the time. But. TJ is certainly capable of doing that as well, but he, he's a good player and he's going to have an impact on our roster this year. I know he was drafted by the Cardinals. It, it, it has to be uh, one of those very satisfying moments as a head coach of a baseball program in college when uh, a major league baseball team comes calling and the kid decides to come play for you. It is because it's not, you know, it's not a slam dunk. I mean, we're very fortunate. I know we talked about the lighter family before we got on the air, but you know, even a kid like Jack, you know, not knowing what he was going to do uh, to get him was was certainly a, a big deal. Kumar Rocker, same type of thing. But you know, a lot of these kids are taken, and not always at the high levels of the draft, but sometimes at the mid-range levels, the tenth and eleventh. That's because that club takes a flyer on them just in case they have extra money. But to overcome that and uh, to retain some of those kids is, is certainly a benefit for Vanderbilt. And I think in a lot of ways a benefit for them, too, because I, I think of the maturity piece of that, if you want to be a big leaguer, a lot of this is about your 
your acquisition of mental skills along with your physical skills. And if you don't have those, it's going to be very tough to play in that environment. That's a very grueling environment. There's a lot of games. And uh, at, at that point right there, it becomes more of a business. So uh, I think this is a good training ground for any player like a TJ McKenzie or any of those kids that I mentioned prior to. Tim, we certainly appreciate you joining us. We uh, we always love hearing from you. Your insights are invaluable, and we wish you and your family the best this holiday season. Thanks for joining us today. You're nice. Thank you very much, and Thanks, happy Tim. holidays, fellas. Thank, Thank you. you. Coach Tim Corbin, one of the best. What better way to kick off our uh, back-to-school feature here on Hot Stove? You know, he said something really interesting about Dansby Swanson that, that I wrote down. Um, and I'm paraphrasing here. When you asked him about Dansby, right. he said that he's made decisions in his life right. that have gotten him to this point, meaning work, dedication, sure. sacrifice, like he has focused himself to get uh, here. I he think had, that's the big thing is, look, you're going down the road, you can go this way or this way. And if this way means a little bit more fun, but my takeaway from this road over here, stay on this road a little bit longer. And I think that's yeah. kind of what he's saying. Yeah. If he made the right choice to spend a little bit of time taking more ground balls, taking a few more swings in the cage, that's probably why he is where he is. Yeah. Put the contraband down mm -hmm. for a minute and focus on what you're doing. Check. I love